to be seated. <coughs> The 8th of March was International Women's Day and there are lots of websites out there celebrating brave or groundbreaking women. I wonder who the bravest woman is that you can think of. Maybe it's Rosa Parks for sitting in the only white, the white only seat on the bus. Or Mother Teresa for putting others before herself in the slums of Calcutta. For Evelyn Pankhurst, for going to prison rather than to stop her campaign for the vote of women. Or what about Malala, for going to school even though she was attacked and almost killed? And those are people who all tend to make these lists, though Mother Teresa has fallen a little bit out of favour in recent years. And as I was reading these lists, there were some ones there that I'd never come across before. Like the night witches of World War II, Russian female fighter pilots who were famous for idling their engines as they swooped down over their targets so that they just appeared as gusts of wind. They also didn't carry parachutes until 1944 and they were started in 1941. But sometimes bravery isn't seen in an act of heroism, but in the courage of speaking out. Think of someone like Katie Price, who was a model just beginning a career in the media, when in 2008, she was attacked by an ex-boyfriend and his accomplice, acid thrown over her face. It caused major damage to her eye and to her face from being a model to being um, disfigured in such a way. She was able to have pioneering surgery and in 2009 she waived her anonymity to speak out so that she could increase awareness about this sort of attack. Well, perhaps your brave woman isn't famous on the world stage at all. Maybe the brave woman you're thinking about is a family member or a friend, maybe a grandmother who struggled to keep her family together during the depression, or a sister battling bravely through debilitating illness. Do you, once we start looking, we see there are brave women all around us. But the one thing that struck me about these lists was the lack of biblical characters included. Now maybe the writers of these lists don't know their Bibles. Or maybe they've swallowed the lie that the Bible is all about men. Whatever the reason, they're really missing out. Last week, we met the woman at the well, who was brave enough not only to get into a debate with Jesus, but then to go and tell a whole village about the man that she'd met and her being an outcast. Or just a few weeks ago, we looked at Deborah. Deborah, who was brave enough to stand up against the army of Sisera and his 900 iron chariots. And then Jael, who finished off the job that Barak, the commander of the Lord's army, didn't do. Brave women. And today we go back a further 300 years or so from Deborah to meet three incredibly brave women. So we are back in Exodus chapter 2, if you've still got it there. Now the events of Exodus 2 take place while God's people are living in the land of Egypt. You'll remember they went to Egypt when Joseph was living there having been sold as a slave, but who'd worked his way up to become second in command of the whole country. And famine forced the Israelites to go and seek food. They met up with Joseph again, and eventually the whole family, the whole nation in embryo, moved to Egypt. But time had passed. God's people had multiplied and there was a new king on the throne. 
And our new king didn't remember Joseph. He didn't remember how Joseph had listened to God and saved the whole nation from famine. And out of fear of the numbers of the Israelites, Pharaoh made them all slaves. It was a terrible life for the Israelites. And they cried out to God for help. But things just kept on getting worse. And Pharaoh's latest thing was to kill all the Israelite baby boys. Can you imagine the pain and the sorrow amongst those Israelite homes? Backbreaking labour, day after day after day. And then seeing the horror of their babies murdered before their eyes. They must have wondered, where is God in all of this? And don't we wonder that when we see terrible things happening? We ask the question, what's God doing about this? <coughs> well, the answer for the Israelites was in verses 1 and 2 of today's reading. Now, a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And in that small bundle was the answer to the people's prayers. But in human terms, of course, his future was still very uncertain. He was a baby in a time of high infant mortality. And he was a target for Pharaoh's soldiers. Yet God used three brave women to ensure the safety of his plan. And five, actually, if you include the midwives, but we haven't got time to look at them today. Now, the first brave woman was the baby's mum. As a mother myself, I can understand the way that you would do almost anything to protect your children. But I can only imagine the terrible desperation that led her to put her baby in the River Nile. The Nile, of course, was where the babies were thrown, and her bouncing baby boy was getting too big to hide. So perhaps she was taking into account the inevitable, yet trying to give her son a chance. I can't imagine the tears she must have shed as she plastered that little basket with bitumen, and then as she left her precious bundle amongst the reeds was a risky thing to do not only for the life of her child but for her life as well if she was found out she too could be killed and then who would be mother to her children Aaron and Miriam she was a brave woman who did the best for her child in spite of the difficult circumstances now we know from her little pop history and that of her husband, that they're from the tribe of Levi. These are people who know and follow God. They're from the priestly tribe of Levi. Maybe she trusted God. I'm sure she did. Trusting God sometimes can lead us to have to do difficult and challenging things. And it is a hard thing to be a parent. It's an especially hard thing to be a Christian parent in a time of change and in a time where society around doesn't teach the same things as maybe we want to teach our children. <coughs> and so as a church family, we have a responsibility to one another. We have a responsibility to care for the families in our midst, to pray for our mothers and fathers, that God might help them to be the best parents they can be. And it will involve courage, risk and sacrifice. So the mother was brave. But you know the sister was also really brave, wasn't she? Miriam stood at a distance. She watched over the baby. And then when Pharaoh's daughter had found him, she seized the moment and she spoke up. Verse 7. Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? 
Now Miriam didn't know how that princess was going to react to her. She could have realised the connection and had her killed. She could have had second thoughts and took the baby and thrown him into the river. Anything could have happened. Yet Miriam, from this faithful home, bravely put herself on the line and spoke up. That is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do today. When you're in a group of friends and they all start talking negatively about somebody else, it can be hard to speak up for that person or even to change the subject. We're afraid of what might be said about us. When things are happening around us in society that are wrong, again, it can be hard to speak up. We're afraid of being a lone voice. Miriam was just a child, yet God used her as she bravely spoke out. And God can use us too as we bravely and thoughtfully speak out for him when the opportunities arise. We can be part of his rescue plan, just as Miriam was. And then there's a third brave woman here, and that is the princess. Her father was Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the region, powerful and ruthless. Yet she was disobeying him by saving one of the very children he said should be killed. And she didn't just save him, she adopted him as her own, bringing him up as an Egyptian, so that unbeknown to her, he would have all the language and understanding of Egyptian ways that would help him to be God's agent in the great rescue of his people. She did the right thing in a society and in a family that was going the wrong way. And God used it powerfully to save his people. When we do the right thing in a society and maybe even in a family that's going the wrong way, God can use that too to bring salvation to others. So three brave women who God used to ensure that his rescue plan for his people happened. And we can celebrate them and we can learn from them. But we do need to keep perspective. This Bible passage isn't here to commend these brave women to us. It's there to tell us something about God himself. It shows us that God is a God who hears the cry of his people and who knows their distress. It shows us that God is a God who acts to rescue his people. And we see that greater rescue in the Lord Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us. And it shows us that God is a God who delights to involve his people in his works of grace. He doesn't just act from on high, he involves us, he includes us in his works. So may we be brave enough, whether we're a man or a woman or a child, to be part of God's rescue plan for the people of our time and our generation. Let's pray. Our loving Father God, we thank you for these courageous women who you used as part of your rescue plan for your people. And we thank you that you include us in your rescue plan for your people today. And so help us to be brave and courageous, to use the talents that you have given us, <coughs> that we might speak out in a society that's turned away from you, that we might do the right thing, even when the people around us are doing the complete opposite. And help us to see your wonderful rescue in the lives of those around us. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and declare our faith using the words on the wall. <laughs>